We are back. It's the Clearing the Crease podcast powered by Bodog.eu. I'm James Sabalski. Seaball, Razor, the Calder Trophy winner. Andrew Raycroft, Kami, the Stanley Cup champion. Mike Commodore in the house. And how about on this episode? He's already in the house with us. We're talking about a world junior gold medalist. We're talking about a Calder Cup winner. Over a thousand games in the National Hockey League. And he is affectionately known to so many guys around the league as Suitcase, Mike Sillinger. <laughs> Silly's going to be joining us here in a moment. We're going to get to him. We got Cheryl Pounder, two-time Olympic gold medalist, dropping by as well. It is a jam-packed edition of the Clearing the Crease podcast. And hey, just a quick reminder, the NHL season heading into winter. Action red hop. What are you waiting for? Make a play every single day with game odds and all of your props you will need to make hockey exciting every night, including goal scorers, Stanley Cup odds. Bodog.eu has you covered with action that'll keep you locked in all season long. Play now, score big with Bodog. And hey, new players, don't forget, you can take advantage of the Bodog bonus. Use the code CREASE400 when you sign up. Well, I would say this. When it comes to hockey podcasts, Kami, we might be the all-time leaders in power rankings when it comes to guests from Saskatchewan. Is that fair? Yeah, that would be fair. We've had a lot of Saskatchewan people on for sure. <laughs> and we're staying consistent with it here we as are. well. They're Super. the best. That's why. Mike, how are you? Not bad. How you guys doing? We're good. Okay, so what, give me the six degrees of Kevin Bacon, Kami, and, and Silly. Where where do you guys first uh where did you guys first connect? Well, I'll go amazingly, actually, since I mean, I will talk, I'm sure we'll get into it in a little bit. I mean, Silly's got the record. I, I mean, I got tried, I got traded a ton too. I think between the two of us, we got two thirds of the league covered. But uh, Mike and I actually never, if we met, we it was very brief while we played. And then once that we were both retired, uh, we have some mutual, well, we have a bunch of mutual friends, but Ray Whitney in particular. And uh, Mike and I started playing some golf together and hit it off immediately. And Mike does some work for the Regina Pats, so he knows my dad. My dad scouts for the Pats as well, so there's kind of a bunch of connections. So this is kind of a relationship that started after hockey, I guess would be would be a fair thing to say. I knew Wayne Commodore before I knew Mike Commodore. So, oh uh, yeah, work with work with the old man. He's uh, we need to get Wayne absolutely. on here, huh? Yes, yeah, we need Wayne on here one yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the first thing my my dad like. Uh, you know, most hockey guys like to have a beer or two or whatever. And, and my dad, this is kind of a funny story. My dad, my parents don't drink. My mom's had one sip of alcohol in her life. And it was when I forced her to during my cup party. I'm like, seriously, like just to sip. <laughs> like you, you don't even have to swallow it if you don't want. And my dad, I've seen have like, you know, maybe a handful of times in my life. I've seen him have like four or five beers. That's well, what it. happened, Kami? I don't know. <laughs> that's why I keep my private life to myself. <laughs> Double yeah, tequilas. I yeah, I don't. When I go over to the old parents' house, like last night, I I don't I don't drink. Um, but anyways, my dad was going on like I think he was your roommate, wasn't he? A couple times, silly. He was. Yeah, yeah. Wayne took care of me. Yeah, so <laughs> they'd have these scout scouting meetings or for the draft or whatever for the Regina Pats, and him and Silly would be roommates. You know, and Silly would go have a couple beers like everybody else was doing. And uh, anyways, my dad would be like, yeah, you know, Mike, I'm like, yeah, great guy. Like, yeah, I was just his roommate. And, he's, and I'm like, yeah, oh, that must have been fun. He's like, yeah, he, he he knows how to drink a beer. And I'm like, yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he, does. <laughs> anyways, he was laughing. <laughs> Mike, uh, Mike I, I guess I, I mean, I, okay, I mean, look, 12 trades, 12 trades in the National Hockey League, uh, which is crazy. Um, what well, I think there's about a half dozen a, a trade deadline time, like, I guess I'm curious, like we we sometimes as media analysts, we just talk about, oh, you know, make a trade, make a trade, fix this. But at the same time, like they're people's lives. Like, did it become when did it become a joke or did it ever become a joke or like or did you like was it uncomfortable every time? Like, like, give me a sense of what what the experience was like. Well, it, obviously, it was really tough in the family. My my wife and I, yeah. Carl, we've been married, you know, for almost 30 years and, and met at a young age and have three boys. And the biggest thing is, you know, the lucky thing is early on, you know, the trades, everything, it was just my wife and I. So I think as it as it went on, it was a lot more, uh, a lot tougher on my on my wife and the kids and whatnot. But uh, but again, you know, I played played 18 years in the league. You know, it wasn't it wasn't 12 trades. It was 12 teams. So I think it was probably about eight or nine trades because I was a free agent twice. So when I was a yeah. free agent twice, I ended up on like six teams in six months. 
So that was a little nerve wracking for my wife. I remember she wanted to stay in St. Louis and, and we were going to, you know, sign an extension there for a couple of years. And then the New York Islanders stepped up to a three-year deal. So it was a uh, boom, boom, boom. You know, it's just, it's one of those things where you got to do what's best for your family and you provide for your family. So, you know, a lot of guys, a lot of guys say, Hey, what was it like? It was a lot more tougher for my family than it was for me because everywhere I went, I had, you know, 22 guys, 25 guys want me, you know, accept me to the team. And, you know, I went on just to play hockey. What was your favorite stop? Well, I have a few of them. You know, I, I, if my, the first time I was a free agent, I ended up with uh, Doug McLean signed me in Columbus. And I really, uh, really, my wife and I really enjoyed Columbus. You know, I was there, I signed a three year deal and I was there for two of the three years. So that was, uh, that was a positive. <laughs> two out of three ain't bad. Yeah, yeah three, that's pretty good. You know, and I, I, I was uh, drafted by Detroit. So at the time, you know, it was a tough lineup to break into. I, I really enjoyed, you know, I was a first rounder there back in 1989 and it would just seem like they had, you know, the Eisenmans, the, the Cicerellis, the Shepherds, the, you know, you name it. It was just a tough lineup to crack. And, you know, I, I moved on from there. So that was a, that was a really good organization. And, you know, as a Canadian boy growing up, I, um, I really enjoyed Vancouver. I was in Vancouver for a couple of years too, you know, that, that second game of hockey night in Canada and, you know, that pressure to perform and, and, you know, beat your top, your game every night. It was, it was uh, it was an awesome place to play. My last question about these trades, and we'll get into other stuff. But was there one like, you know, was there a trade? What would there be one trade? Or I guess free agents. Well, I will I'll leave the free agent stuff out because that was that, that you're kind of picking. Was there a trade that was a little bit, you know, tougher on you or tougher on the family compared to others? Well, is there one that stands out or not really? I would have to say. Yeah, you know what? It, it, more than not, come. I went from a non-playoff team to a playoff team, mm -hmm. so that was a positive. You know, it was a chance to kind of you know beef up your contract, and you're going to a team, you know, kind of salvage a year. You know, so that was, that kind of happened the majority of my trades. So, you know, I think I think the one trade I went from I was in Philly. So the year before, I went from Vancouver to Philly, and then uh, I got traded to Tampa Bay. When I got traded to Tampa Bay, I went from you know top place to last place. So I think that's the only really trade that I. That I went there, but again, my my wife loved it. You're here, you are in the in the sunshine, you know. Yeah, another round for Tampa. family and whatnot, and and uh, it was kind of funny. I went from Tampa Bay to Florida, so it wasn't a moving truck; it was my own truck. So it wasn't it wasn't that far of a drive. <laughs> <laughs> Where were your uh, you know you, you're moving around a ton? Going, you went back to Regina, right? Every summer for the summers, yeah, for the summers, yeah. Had to stay grounded somewhere. So my wife yeah. and I are both from <laughs> Regina, and and that was the kind of thing we. You know, had a personal trainer, lake place, whatnot. So just kind of Regina was where my wife and I were both born and raised, and we ca called that home. Where were your? Uh, I know Cole was born in Columbus. Where were your other two sons born? Silly. So uh, Owen, the oldest, who's twenty six, he was born in Vancouver, and yeah. then uh, my middle guy Lucas, who's at ASU here, he would have been born in uh, Florida, but my wife is on bed rest, so he was born in Regina. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I got, being the West Coast guy, I guess I'll, I'll bring it back to Vancouver here for a second, silly. And and I, I, I was shocked to see that your longest NHL playoff run was six games, and that was with the Canucks, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. Like you, for over a thousand games in the league, like it's it's almost criminal how few playoff games you got in. But give me a sense of what that period was like in Vancouver, where you know they're two years removed from Game Seven and one of the greatest Stanley Cup Finals ever with the Rangers and the Canucks. Um, you still got a lot of that core intact, right? You know, Burray's in his prime. Uh, what was that experience like for a team that was probably that probably still had championship aspirations? Is that fair to say at that period? Absolutely, yeah. Well, they, we had uh, <clears throat> that's when Mark Messier signed there as well. So yeah, you know, Burray, McGillney, uh, Lou May, Dave Babbage, Kirk McLean, Trevor Linden, Marty Jelena. You know, the list goes on. Asa Tikkanen. Yeah. The list goes on. I, I, I remember. I remember. Um, we were on the road. We were in Washington. We just Tom Rennie was a coach, uh, I think, at the time, and we just lost ten games in a row. And you know, it was Orca Bay flew in and and uh, fired Pat Quinn, and it was kind of like it was just kind of a weird feeling, you know, looking around and seeing all the stars and seeing everyone going like it's on us because you know we we weren't playing good hockey. But yeah, it was a it was a, and again it was a it was a pressure place to play. Um, I loved it. You know, obviously I wasn't one of the, one of the big stars. So the, the pressure wasn't as heavy on me, but uh, I really enjoyed it. How good was Burry? Oh yeah, he was good. Burry McGillney. I tell you what, those two are uh, special players. You know, obviously Burry with his dynamic speed, he just always hit the hole and always had a breakaway. 
And McGillney, you just see him kind of, I don't want to say float around, but he was always, every time he, <laughs> he had a gear though, right? Slot, like crazy. it was a give a shit. Every gear, right? <laughs> time he got that puck in a slot, it was just a little snapper five hole. He must have the most five hole goals in the league. Like it, it's on that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you, you obviously you watch a lot of hockey still, uh, you talked about Regina Pats and, and your son, uh, do you like the game now? And, and if love, there's, what would you change about it? <laughs> I love the game. Um, my wife and I obviously follow three boys around and that's kind of our lives. You know, we kind of spend the summers in, uh, in, uh, Saskatchewan and I have a place in Phoenix here. So I spend a good, you know, six, seven months here in Phoenix. So that's kind of what we do is, is chase the boys around and we watch lots of hockey and, um, as far as what would I change? I don't think I'd change anything. I think the speed of the game is, is fantastic. You know, it's, uh, it's come a long way, you know, I, I know we're trying to create a little bit more offense and whatnot, but again, all these teams are so defensively sound and it, it's tough hockey. It's tough to get on the inside. I got it. I'm going to back it up a little bit here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you torched it in Regina. I was looking at your stats. I knew it, but when, I mean, we're talking torched, burnt the building to the ground. You get picked in 1989. You go in the first round, and, and you had an excellent career. Great pick. Here are – I don't know if you guys have seen this. It, here's – their other Detroit – I mean, this is a draft <laughs> class right here. Silly in the first round. Bob Bogner in the second round. Nick Lidstrom in the third round. Sergey Fedorov in the fourth <laughs> round. Dallas Drake in the sixth round. And Vladimir Konstantinov in the 11th round. When you got – I mean, obviously there was, and I think Fedorov came in and lit it up right away, didn't he? He did. And, you know, that's, you have to remember, that's when the Europeans weren't supposed to go until the third round, I think it was. That's okay. why Nick, yeah, that's that's why I think why Nick was a, was a third rounder, not a first rounder. So it just was kind of the, how the draft rules and whatnot. That, that's oh, that was a, oh, that, that was, was a rule? rule? Yeah, I think the Europeans weren't defecting. And a lot of, maybe it was a rule, but I know a lot of the NHL teams we're not taking them in the top two rounds. Oh, going to North America. So that's, that. that's what happened. So it, 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 it's kind of fun. I even joke with my son now who got drafted by, by Columbus. He was 11th pick overall or 12th, I guess, because Phoenix. So I said, at least you got drafted in an era where the, it was an entire uh, Europe and uh, North America. So he was, he was kind of <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> yeah. It's, but, you know, you look at that period, you know, Mike, you, you come in with Detroit and, and kind of what Kami alluded to, right? Like there's that sort of, you know, you've got Iserman as kind of your your veteran dog there, and and he's still in his late twenties at that point. But Fedorov, Lidstrom, all coming in at the same time. Johan Garpenlov was a highly touted prospect. Yep. You know, here's you as a first rounder. Give me a sense of what the energy was like in Detroit, or or at least in, even going through that farm system. Because, I mean, what a pipeline! It really kind of speaks to just how good Detroit was at drafting, even from that whole '90s period, right? Absolutely. If you talk to uh, one of our buddies, uh, Kenny Holland, he'll take uh, big time uh, uh, credit for that. As of course, as oh, yeah. a scout. yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. it was he, all him. <laughs> he, uh, he worked his he worked his tail off. But yeah, no, it was, I tell you what, it was buzzing, and it was uh, it was uh, like I said, it was. I look back, and I was just too young to really realize what a great organization it was. And you know, here I'm playing for Original Six, and you know, all I wanted to do as a young kid was get my foot in the door and and, and play in the National Hockey League. So. The best thing that happened to me is, as you guys mentioned early on, I, at 19 years old, I got to play for Team Canada and I won a, won a gold medal, uh, you know, got to represent Canada. So that was awesome. And the next year, as soon as I was old enough to go down to, 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 to play in Detroit, boom, they sent me right down to Adirondack. And, you know, here I'm kind of looking around going like, I can't believe it. They're sending like, I'm a first rounder. Like, what's going on here? Why am I going to the minors? But it was the best thing that happened for me. I, I played Barry Mowers as the coach. Um, you know, as the year went on, I played with a lot of, I, I think it was like 11 or 12 guys when we won the color up end up playing in the national hockey league the following year. So, you know, that's, that's how you develop. And that's how you look at all the guys that played, you know, you're going to get your opportunity eventually. And I did, I got my opportunity in Detroit, but myself, uh, Jason York and myself got traded to Anaheim and, you know, went on to have healthy careers. And that, that's just what happens. You can't hang on to all these young guys anymore. And you see that with the organizations nowadays too. Looking, looking at your the your history and your career, one thing that jumped out to me, and and for whatever re I for whatever reason I remember this team and I remember this person is the '91 World Junior Team, yeah. And I recognize you're on it. I got to ask about Big E. 
and what that (laughs) what he was like in 91 as a 17 year old kid in that tournament because that team is nuts if anyone go look at that roster everybody the 91 roster is nuts i remember watching it but biggie's the one that stands out for me and felix poffman but for sure. And, and Trevor Kidd was our goalie. He had two goalies yeah. where he played two Scott goalies, Kidd and Poffin. But Eric Lindros was a horse. Like, you have 17 years old. This guy logged 20 minutes a night and uh, absolute warrior. Like, he just was, again, he was a, a 20, 21 year old playing in a 17 year old body. Like, he just was a, <laughs> he was bigger, better, stronger, faster than everyone else. And, you know, led Team Canada for a couple of years there. And I, I was actually the only uh, Saskatchewan boy on the team. So it was kind of an honor to, to you know, being from Regina and, and born and raised. I was the only Saskatchewan boy, so they kind of made, made a big deal about it. And uh, actually, we played a couple of Nutricide games in Regina, and, and I got, uh, I think I scored, or maybe I got a helper. But it was pretty cool, you know, to, to go back home and represent Team Canada. And, and again, win the gold medal. It was uh, We kind of, I think we backdoored it there. We were we needed uh, a couple ties, a couple uh, other teams to help us out. And here we are playing in the gold medal game against Russia. And, I still that that last five minutes after John Slaney scored that last five minutes seemed like it was yeah. about a 30 minute period, but it was, uh, it was awesome. And it was amazing and had my family there. And yeah, it was, uh, it was, a, it was an unbelievable experience. Where was the tournament? Sorry. Right sorry. in Saskatoon. Right in Saskatoon. Oh, oh so I mean, I was yeah. only Saskatchewan oh, yeah. boy. Yeah. Really oh. cool. Drive oh, down you, were, you were a man. <laughs> oh, boy. With the cheesy stash. I had the cheesy stash. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I still have, I still have somewhere. I have the Mike Sillinger world junior upper deck card from that. Uh, when oh that, yeah. Uh, anyone That's see brilliant. like, but that was really that, that was the, you know, Razor, it's a great callback on this because that, that team, that 91 world junior team, Mike, maybe you can speak to this having been there and lived it. And, and now you've had the benefit, the benefit of hindsight, but that's four years removed from the punch up in Piastani, right? Where, you know, the, the, the massive, they turn the lights out and the fight with Russia, but that world junior in 91, that team, you know, you had a rock star like Lindros. There was so much talk, but that really feels like that was the tournament that made the tournament what it is today. How, you know, it's a Canadian tradition now where you got millions of people watching starting boxing day in that two week, like what the world juniors is now. I really feel like, that 91 team that you guys are talking about, I feel like that's the team that really set the bar in terms of the love in that Canada now has for that tournament. Yeah, it was, it was special. Cause I think back then too, we, we were the, the first Canadian world junior team to win at home soil. And the dry. Yeah, and the okay, dry yeah, so-, home soil. so that was, it was special. And, and, you know, I look back to all the names and it was, it was you know, I, I got uh, here at ASU, uh, Scotty Dienmeyer has both his boys here at ASU and, we kind of joke about it. He was our seventh defenseman. The old Hall of Famer was the seventh, <laughs> seventh defenseman. I was like, whoa, that was... <laughs> we got a pretty good team. We, we got lucky to win with him on the bench. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brad May. Brad May was my roommate there, too. Oh, we had a blast. Up. Brad May, what a fantastic guy. It was... Uh, it was we we had a lot of fun. Marty Lapointe on that, Chris Marty Draper, Lapointe, like Greg all, the, all the future Red Wings too, right? Greg Johnson, yeah, it was it was. Greg uh, John, I got to look at that roster. Oh, it's nuts! Man. It's nuts! Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! Wow. And big. What's uh? Since we got you, what's going on in Columbus, silly? Have you been oh out boy. there yet this year? Well, they're they're not winning, Tommy. No, <laughs> that's, a loaded <laughs> question. that's a loaded question, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I hear here's my thing with it is is you know they Pascal, Vincent's doing a really good job. I think the team's trying to you know he's trying to instill compete, trying to say hey you know we we know we got a long ways to go here. You know we're struggling scoring goals, but at the end of the day we got to work, work, work. We got to. It's easy to sit there and feel sorry for yourself. So. When they practice, they practice hard. You know, he said, I don't care who you are. You got to come to this team and you got to, you got to, you got to earn your spot in the lineup. And as you can see early on, you know, he, he scratched Marchenko, scratched uh, Roslovic, you know, he, uh, he sent you know, Johnson down. Like, so he's doing things that, that, you know, if he's not happy with certain guys, he, he's, 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 Hey, I got to get, I got to get these guys going. And, you know, you know, everyone's a little bit on uh, obviously Johnny and uh, Johnny hockey and line a, but, at the end, it's 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 tough to score in this league, and you know they they might go their next twenty games. They might have they might have 10, 12 goals. So it's just the way it is. You, you know when these funks happen. I think that um, you know they're in a downhill spiral right now. Everyone's kind of looking around each other, like who's going to get us out of this? 
Um, that, you know, uh, you know, they every night too. They different goaltenders going in. They don't really have any line combinations. No one's really sticking with everyone. It, it just it, it's tough. You know, they got Boone Jenner there, obviously a a, a one you know solid guy, individual character guy, captain. You know, he's grinding away and do the best he can do. I, I just think they're all they're all trying. It's just you know, there's just not re- really much the, the chemistry there right now. Yeah. What's uh? I mean, you're a wealth of knowledge. Obviously, do you talk to Cole a lot? Does he call you a bunch? Oh, I do. You know, we've, yeah. uh, you know, again, you know, he knows it's an honor to play there. He, you know, he made the team at 18 years old. You had a really good year the first year. Uh, last year, he struggled offensively and the team struggled as well. And now, and now here we go again, you know, uh, Cole's without a goal here. I think he's got six or seven assists, you know, but again, he's, he's uh, four or five points to, from being the leading scorer in the team. So, right. you know, yeah. when a team doesn't, when a team doesn't, uh, score easy you know you got to find a way to keep them out of your net and that's what's happening they're scoring a couple goals a game and they're losing three two and four three so you know Cole I just said uh, you know I, I said bud when you were I was 20 years old I was old enough to play I was in the minors I said you're 200 games 200 games ahead of most players and and you know I, I think that's a big reason why he played 18 years old too he was a big frat, fast strong you know he um, you know it, it was crazy he went from the medicine hat tigers at the year of 16 years old he, uh, you know, he COVID hit and everything. And because he was a USA born, he got to go play in the USHL. And then he went from the USHL to the NHL. So you, you have to remember with Cole, like that, that development there, he's used to playing 40, 50 games. Now all of a sudden he's playing, you know, that first year he played 70 plus games. And then he went with Team Canada. So this kid played 90 games. So yeah. he's, you know, he usually does that in two years. So I, not to make excuses for him, I just think that, that uh, again, he's, he's a young guy. Everyone kind of, you kind of forget he's 20 years old. You know, he's going to be a heck of a player in this league a long time, and the, and the scoring is going to come. He does so many things so well away from the puck, and that's what these coaches try to teach. You know, they go, go back to my days. I was really well, you know, offensively. I, like I said, a very offensively gifted. And as soon as I was old enough to play in the NHL, they're like, hey, kid, got to learn how to play defense. You're going yeah. out in Myers, you know, we, we want to make you a PK, and we don't care about your offense. We know what's going to come. So I think that's kind of, you know, the same situation that, that happens to a lot of these young guys. They got to, they got to learn how to play in both ends of the rink, play a 200 foot game. I, I'd be curious to, to go back to your journey. You know, we talked about 10, 10 trades, 12 different teams, silly. Is there one manager? Is there one GM who broke it to you gently? Who was, was there, is there, was there somebody who gave it to you nicely or did they come to the door at least, or <laughs> as a <laughs> come to the one office, of my like, favorites, there... one of my favorites, he actually traded for me again, a couple of times at Brian Murray. Brian Murray. Murray. Yeah. He was a very, very, he was a, a gentleman and yeah, he's, he was one of the guys that ended up traded trading at me. And, and then he was one of the guys that actually traded for me uh, when he was in Florida. Can so, you walk, can you walk us through the, the scenario? How he did what, what, what? Well, it was, uh, it was just kind of funny. It was a phone call. I was actually in Montreal. I was in Montreal. We were playing uh, the Canadians. And of course, I'm, uh, my wife's watching from back and, in uh, Tampa, I'm sitting there watching, and, and three o'clock hits. So I'm sitting on TV, not even having a pregame nap. I'm like, this is the deadline. There's no way I'm a free agent. There's no way I'm not getting traded. Like, <laughs> we're sitting there watching, sitting there watching. And and then Newport Sports, uh, Donnie Meehan and Oster were my agents and yep. called Carla. And Carla's like, Yeah, Mike's, well, I'm, you know, he's getting ready for a hockey game. And I said, I think it was a few minutes after the deadline. But Brian called me right away and said, Hey, Mike, you know, we, got together as a, as a Red Wing and, you know, you're, you're a heck of a player and it's, it's, it's an honor to have you back again. So it was, it was pretty cool because uh, like, again, a lot of these things, they happen. It's just like, get out of here, you know, you're gone. And, and uh, I got a funny story with Mike Keenan oh. when, I, when I got traded from oh. Vancouver and I had a lot out, outmost respect for Mike Keenan. He was, uh, you know, hard nose. He was, um, you know, he, he, high pace, high tempo. And like, you know, you were not treated like a piece of meat, but he was like, Hey, he, he was a high demand guy. And I think I was scratched for about a half a dozen games and team was losing. And, you know, he's got that squirrely eye. He's got that goofy look. And, and, uh, I went in his office one day and I was just sweating. My hands are sweating. And I'm just like, I don't know what he's going to say or do, but I'm just like, Hey, Mike, you know what? I, I know you don't overly like me, you know, that's fine. I was like, uh, I, I can't stand here and watch this team lose. You know, I had a, I had a good year last year, and you know, I I want to I want to move on. I want to I want to move on, and and I hope you can accommodate me. And I just I just you know, I, it's not that I don't want to be a Vancouver Canuck. And he's looking at me, and that eye is squirreling, and eyes going. So I thought he was just going to blow up. He said, Mike, 
takes a lot of balls for a guy to come in here and ask for a trade. I'll have you accommodated in two days. And boom, I was gone to Philly. Wow. In two days. So out. I thought he was going to snap and, and I was just like, woo, is this everything? And then <laughs> I went from Vancouver to Philly and kind of rejuvenated my, my career again. So it was, it was, uh, wow. it was a good thing. So I, I confronted him and he was uh, very respectful and I, yeah, I thought he was just going to snap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a long list of stories of he always always wanted wanted confrontation. He always wanted a <laughs> confrontation, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, silly. Thanks so much for doing this. It's, uh, it's thanks, great to memory lane. I mean, it's just remarkable the journey you've had and, and uh, who's your cup prediction. Who's your cup, cup prediction? prediction. Oh boy. Can Vegas hang in there again? Or are they ever good? <laughs> Vegas is good. I like Dallas. Yeah. The Rangers, maybe. I don't know. Are they going to, they know. get a hot goalie. Oh, they're D sick. They're D. Yeah. It's crazy. You don't trust the Rangers, but you don't trust them. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't Vegas is good. Vegas is good. Yeah. I've, yeah they Vegas, yeah, they just keep clicking. They're and Dallas, you know, Dallas, Colorado, they're going to beat each other up. They're heavy yeah. teams. So, yeah, but yeah I, I uh, look how well Van's doing. Good for talking. Yeah. Awesome yeah. for Rick. Yeah. yeah. Talks. Yeah. Got those guys going the right direction. Good goaltending masks a lot of issues too, right? You Absolutely. Back to playing, yeah, for uh, sure. playing really well. Yeah. You know, it's silly. I think it's a real testament to just how what a character player you are and a person you are when you can go to that many different teams to be wanted to have, you know, as a role player to play that long. And man, you're kind of like a fine wine too, right? I mean, what you finally, you hit 26 <laughs> goals, like in the last couple of years of your career. Yeah. Like, hey, it's really get, remarkable. Like, to, let's to get it right. I had 32. 32. 32. 32. 32. Yeah. 32, the 32. There. That got me my last three years. So <laughs> well played. Yeah. The time that Come out. On, <laughs> Hey, don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. <laughs> um, thanks. Thanks, man. Silly. We'll let you get off right, to the guys. golf course, but I don't know you got to get going. Take care, guys. See you later. All right, man. See you, Silly. Mike Sillinger joining us here on the Clearing the Crease podcast. Yeah, I hit him straight.